Hello everyone, it's Hannah here from Virtually Fluent. Welcome to today's video where we are going to talk about collective nouns. We're going to start off learning what a collective noun is. We will look at some typical examples, how they're used grammatically, and of course those grey areas or exceptions when it comes to collective nouns. If you want to learn even more about collective nouns or simply practice the topic with quizzes, online activities and games, you can take our collective nouns grammar course. I've left the link to that in the description below. But for now, let's get started with the grammar of collective nouns. I've written here that a collective noun is one word which represents a group of people or things. Let's take some examples like a team, a government or a council. Each of these is made up by individual people or things. Let's take a team for example, you have three, four, maybe much more inside that team or many more people inside that team. But we use the word team as one collective word to describe all the people that it's representing. And it's the same with government and council. There are so many collective nouns in English, we also use these to talk about groups of animals. I have left a list of the most common collective nouns in our collective nouns course. As I said at the beginning of today's video, the link to that is in the description below. But collective nouns then starts to bring forward a tricky question. Do we need to use singular because it's one group representing people? Or do we need to use plural because there are many people being represented? Actually, there's a tiny, tiny difference and very specific situations for when we do use the singular and when we do use the plural with these collective nouns. So when that collective noun is used to talk about one entity, one group, and every person or thing inside that collective noun is doing the same activity, one unit, then we would use it in its singular form. For example, the team attends a meeting every Monday. So every person in that team attends the meeting, they are all doing the same action. Therefore, we can use the singular form of the verb. Here's another example, the choir sings every Monday. You would assume every person within that choir is singing at the same time. However, when we want to talk about each individual person or thing inside that collective noun doing something different or something individual, then we can use the plural form of the verb instead. For example, the team do their tasks. It might be that one person is doing some marketing, the next person is responding to some emails, the next person is working in finance. They are one collective team, but each person is doing something different. So for this particular sentence, talking about their tasks, we would need the plural form of the verb. It's exactly the same in this sentence, the class wait for their teacher. Perhaps some students are rapidly doing their homework before the teacher arrives, or some students are chatting or on their phones. All different activities, plural form of the verb. And of course, it's really important to note that it's not the verb or only the verb that changes. Also, pronouns and other parts of the sentence will need to reflect that same grammatical form. So now I'd like to talk about a couple of the grey areas or exceptions. And the first one is when we talk about company names. Let's take Apple or the United Nations, for example. Company names generally use the singular form of the verb. For example, Apple is working on a new iPhone or the United Nations is improving conditions of life in certain countries. It's also really important to note that when we use the plural form, that it must be unanimous, so every single person or thing within that particular collective noun must be doing the same thing. And we can also use this to understand exactly what the person is trying to say in English. Let's take these examples. The committee disagrees. I can hear here it's the singular form of the verb, so I know that every person disagreed with this decision. 
However, if I go over to the plural form of the word, for example, the committee disagree, I start to think, hang on, not everybody had the same opinion. It's not a unanimous decision. So we can use it to help us express more specific information in English. But it is very important to note that here in the UK, for example, in British English, particularly with the word family, we tend to use, rather strangely, the plural form of the verb. I would say my family are from London, whilst over in American English with the word family, they tend to use the singular form of the verb. My family is from London. It's also important to note that different forms of every and no also simply always use the singular form. Everyone, everybody, no one, nobody. For example, everyone is happy, nobody is happy. Simply, always with singular. And the final thing to note is that when we talk about the police, rather strangely, we only use the plural form of the verb. For example, the police protect our cities. We would always use the plural. So that's it when it comes to collective nouns. If you've learned something new or simply enjoy today's video, go ahead and give us a like and don't forget to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you know exactly when we upload new videos about English grammar, pronunciation and vocabulary boosters too. That's all for today. This is Hannah from Virtually Fluent, bringing English to life.